Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and welcome to part two of our Monarch Overview. In this video we'll be covering all of the controls on panel B, which you can access by pressing this little B right here. And turn on the edit button to get access to all of the controls available to us. So we have three setting types. And basically what these are is we're storing three different setups for panel B here. And we can choose which of the three to use for any given snapshot. And the ignore snapshot change button makes it so that we're always using the same um, setup for panel B regardless of what preset we're using. So the three settings um, come with kind of some factory defaults for you to use and if you make edits that you're not very happy with you can always reset to the factory default by pressing the reset button in the uh, upper right hand corner over here. Alright so let's check out the keyboard area on the left hand side here and the first control we have is priority which controls the way that legato is used in monarch so since monarch is a monophonics um, synthesizer whenever we're playing more than one note we have to choose which one is currently active um, so if we're using um, low mode which is currently selected Whatever the MIDI note with the lowest note number is, we'll play regardless of when they were received or whatever. I don't really like this mode very much. I mean, you can be playing a note and then pressing another note and the new note won't play until you release the old one. So if you watch the MIDI indicator in the upper right hand corner, you can see that um, I play a second note and it doesn't change until I release the first one. So I like last mode a lot better. This is just going to play whatever your most recently received note is. And then, of course, the high mode works just like uh, low mode, except sir, it's always playing the MIDI note with the highest value. And the second legato mode we have decides when a new envelope will be triggered. So never mode just means that if there's already a note playing and we play a second note, we're not going to re-trigger the, either the filter envelope or the amplitude ampl envelope. And you can hear that pretty easily. So I've just set up a very simple patch where we can hear the filter envelope whenever it gets triggered. So on the second note, the filter envelope didn't trigger there, and you can hear the difference immediately if you can compare it to when we um, set the envelope re-trigger setting to note on. And the last envelope re-trigger setting we have is on-off. And in this mode, we will trigger the envelope every time a MIDI note is turned on or turned off. And again, it's easiest just to listen to this. Alright, so I'm just going to set that back to note on, which is my favorite setting. And next up we have the glide um, options here. So there's two different choices, and these control how glide works when you release all the MIDI notes in the middle of gliding between one and the other. And in that case, we can either continue gliding towards our destination, or we can stop right where we are. Um, so gate tells us to stop and free run tells us to keep going. Alright, so that's easy enough difference to hear. Next up we have the pitch bend section. The curve parameter controls the pitch bend wheel, 
and the lower the value, the more sensitive the pitch bend is in the center. This is, again, something easier to hear, maybe, than to explain. So if we turn this up, the pitch bend will become uh, less sensitive. It'll give us a finer control in the center. And the range value, of course, just controls the maximum amount of pitch bend available. And so the mod wheel area has controls that are just like this, um, except for they control the mod wheel instead of the pitch bend. So we have two, we have one for when the oscillator three is uh, set to low mode, and one when it's set to uh, audio frequencies. And then the two pitch and two cutoff knobs control the uh, maximum amount of pitch or cutoff modulation available. And again, we have two, one for um, low frequency mode and one for audio frequency mode. One of the ways that Monarch gets the sound that it gets is by not having perfect tuning of its oscillators, something that's very common in analog gear. So in the oscillator section, we have some controls that affect how um, precise the tuning is. So key tracking controls how well the um, frequency is controlled by MIDI pitch. And you can hear it makes just a very slight difference on the tuning. And further we have the octave detuning, which detunes um, the octave parameters, and this is best heard with more than one oscillator. So the slightly different frequencies allow the oscillators to kind of create a phasing effect. And to be honest, I'm not sure exactly how the OSC set knob works. I know that it does affect um, how each oscillator is tuned, but even looking it up in the manual, I was not really able to get a very good idea of exactly what's happening there. These bottom knobs control the minimum and maximum frequency of oscillator 3 when the key tracking is off. So when you're using oscillator 3 as an LFO, these control the um, minimum and maximum available frequency val values. Um, we have a filter mode that we can choose between MM, which is a more uh, closely modeled after the mini Moog or a linear filter, which is, I'm assuming, just more similar to a more modern digital filter. And finally, the leakage parameter kind of controls, like, kind of gives you like a little bit of extra grit to your sound, and the drift amount controls the stability of the um, oscillators. So the more drift you have, the more the oscillators can drift away from what they are, what frequency they're supposed to be playing. All right, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com. If you guys enjoyed this video, please check out our website, and I'll be back again next week with another Reactor video.